2.22. All right. Okay. So, um, hymn song tonight is uh, page 2.22. 2.22. And um, we'll do here the first, second, third, and last, okay? First, second, third, and last, uh, page 222. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he says on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but a smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sigh nor a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but a toil he does richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey Then in fellowships we We will sit at his feet Or we walk by his side in the way Where he says we will do Where he says we will go Never fear, only trust and obey Trust and obey For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Amen. <clears throat> welcome. Welcome, everybody. What a blessing it is to see you back tonight. We're going to have the choir come up. And as they're coming up, I want you to know that I praise the Lord. And I want you to praise the Lord with me. The blessing this morning, how God met with us in a wonderful way. And tonight, together uh, as well, God is blessing us. But this morning, oh, thank the Lord, you know, to see so many visitors. And we welcome you back. And thank God so much. You know, we're here this morning and back tonight. Amen. Thank you. Welcome. And God bless. We seen people saved. Amen. We seen people baptized. I, I warmed up the baptistry yesterday. I want to see, see somebody get baptized. Amen. Amen. And, and God bless, you know. Amen. And Lord, help me to preach. And I want to say thank you in the choir, singing. Thank you, special music. And thank you so much for all that you did work so hard and getting people to church and downstairs. You fed so many people. Thank God for the ones that helped with the food there and getting food out, Sister Barnett, Sister Ruth, and making sure people are fed. And so many people this morning. And thank God so much for the sacrifice. And and it looks beautiful downstairs, the, the painting down there. Thank God so much for all y'all working so hard around here to get look beautiful around here, getting ready for our, our Bible conference as well uh, coming up in June. So we thank the Lord so much for the work and people. We welcome you online listeners. We, it's just such encouraging, such a blessing, those that watch online. We thank God for our online family, those that watch and those that, you know, I, I just thank God we have this. And uh, I thank God for our people that make it possible we can be online and be a blessing to all those out there. And we, we love our online uh, lookers and listeners, and we're thankful for you. And thank God for the people that are here. I want to say thank you for attending. Let's bow our heads in prayer if we will, okay?
Father, we thank you for our people that are here. We thank you for the people that's watching and listening online. We think about Randy. We think about our visitor. He, he was a visitor, but now he's driving our bus. Thank you so much for social network. And we pray that you touch people's hearts and, I, and guide them to our church. And Lord, you're able to do it over and over again. Guide people here through the social network. And dear Lord, through the knocking on doors and <laughs> passing out tracks and bus routes and people just every, every day being a witness, bring people in for your glory. Bless the choir. Bless the choir as they sing. And bless the listeners, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. God bless you. So many times I question certain circumstances and things I could not understand. And many times in trials, weakness blurs my vision. And that's when my frustration gets so out of hand. It's then I am reminded that I've never been forsaken. I never had to stand one test alone. When I look at all my victories, the spirit rises up in me. And it's through the fire my weakness is made strong. Oh, he never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb. He never offered our victories without fighting, but he said help would always come in time. Just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and the adversary says give in. Just hold on, my God will show up, yes. He will take you through the fire again. I know within myself that I will surely perish. Oh, but if I trust in the mighty hand of God, he'll shield the flames again again he never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb he never offered our victories without fighting but he said help would always come in time just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and the adversary says give in just hold on my god will show up yes he will take you through the fire again he never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb he never offered our victories without fighting, but he said help would always come in time. Just remember when you're standing in the valley of decisions, and the adversary says give in. Just hold on. My God will show up. Yes. He will take you through the fire again. Just hold on. My God will show up. And he will take you through the fire again. Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. Amen. Let's everybody stand, please. Thank you so much, choir. Thank you so much. When you go through a fire, that, that's encouraging. That's very encouraging. And um, we're going to get ready to worship God in tithes and in offerings, okay? All right. We're going to go ahead and pass out um, 
these, um, we got some bulletins left, okay? We got some bulletins left, and um, we also got some flyers here, okay? That we'll 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 pass out. Brother Ron, I got some here, some flyers, and I've got some here. We'll we'll pass them out here, okay? And get them in hand, brother brother Tim. Here you go. Pass these out here. These um, flyers of the Bible conference. Brother Brill, y'all did a wonderful job. This is trees, and, we, and we're getting it rolling and getting things rolling. We're gonna get some with some pictures on them, Lord willing, and, and we're, was, we're gonna we're gonna grow as we we're gonna grow grow as we go. Amen. 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 Oh, brother, brother, want to see one here too? But Tim, can I get one more over here? Wait a minute, and uh, and so we'll we will grow as we go. Amen. Amen. And so the wonderful job here, uh, Sister Trees, Brother Burley. Thank you for working on this here, Amen. and uh, th this is a wonderful uh, kickstart here. Amen. 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 Don't look for your face in this picture here, okay? <laughs> Some of you looking for your picture. <laughs> You're looking for your picture. Here it is. <laughs> this is uh, just a sample picture here, okay? <laughs> just in case you want to take your glasses off and say, is that you? But we wanted to uh, put a picture up here that would represent different, um, you know, nationalities of people on this flyer. But I want you to start praying for the conference. We'll, we'll get... Um, Lord willing, um, uh, some flyers made like we did last year uh, with pictures on it, and um, and we'll just uh, grow as we go, and we'll, we'll perfect Amen. we'll perfect the um, flyers, and um, and so this is a start here, okay? And I want you to start praying for the speakers from June 12th to 17th. You can you you can be you can be um, seated, you can be seated. God bless you. Good to have you back, Brother Reginald and Shauna. Thank, thank God for you, and we appreciate you so much. And um, you know, didn't expect you to come back tonight, but that's that's, a, that's that shows your heart uh, uh, much about the the love of the Lord that you have, and um, and uh, knowing how much we we love and appreciate you, and pray for you, and uh, thank God. Amen. And anything we can do while you're here to make you stay more comfortable, you let, you let me know. Okay? Want to be a help to you, We're praying for you. Amen. Amen. All right, friends. So I want you to uh, get a bulletin if you ain't got a bulletin there, and look at the bulletin. And um, we got some left. How many bulletins? I could. I don't know what I did with mine this morning. I could use a bulletin here. And um, if you got if you got a bulletin there, and uh, bring me a bulletin if you, if you will, please. And um, if you, if you need one, you don't have yours from this morning. Um, just um, raise your hand if you didn't get a, a bulletin. Just raise your hand. And we want to make sure we get you a bulletin if, if you didn't get one this morning, okay? Um, but uh, I want you to look at it here, and of course we welcome you, and we want to encourage you to be faithful to the services, and, and then we got some exciting days uh, coming up. Uh, first of all, I want you to pray for Brother Burley. He did be on vacation, and uh, uh, I want you to pray for their safety. Arizona is a long ways. It's really a long ways. And pray for their safety. Pray for their safety. And friend... <laughs> Brother Burley prays, Sister Patrice prays. They're not going to be scared. They'll learn to pray. You won't be scared, but we can't take things for granted, okay? There are wars and rumors of wars of, of nuclear um, war, World War III. A United States citizen um, has been killed, um, a 22-year-old young man. Um, that's serious. That, that's, that's serious. And, and, and for him to threaten nuclear. And the brother Burley prays, some trees, um, they're not scared, but they want the church to pray. Last thing, they want to do something crazy happen, and they'd be stuck out in Arizona somewhere. <laughs> so I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to scare you, sister trees. I'm just, I'm just saying we have a praying church. Amen. <laughs> We're living. <laughs> he knows what happened at 9 11. <laughs> but you know, I'm prompting him to pray. <laughs> This is Reese. I messed with bro. You know, when I went out to California, I got to be honest with you. I had my faith. I had to get my faith. Would you go far away? <laughs> really, really. You're human. You start thinking, man. But you know, God, God's taking care of us, friend. I want you to have a wonderful vacation. And you put that in the hands of the Lord. You can't, you got to move. You got to live on, friend. You got to keep on living. You know what I mean? But, but we love you. We're going to miss you. But we're glad you get a time of refreshing. Amen. 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 God's in control of it all. Yes, sir, amen. 
Man, Putin, I tell you what, God's bigger than Putin. Amen. Amen. He's, he's bigger than that wicked uh, incarnate devil type uh, dropping bombs on those children. And, and so God can take care of that. Amen. God take care of Hitler. He can take care of us. Amen. Amen. But he does want us to pray, though. And we do want to pray for safety, you know. And it don't have to be in Arizona, bro, but something could happen here. We got to pray that God watch over us all. Isn't that right? Amen. 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 Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. And I'm sure Sean will keep us, you know, he'll keep us up to date, Reginald, you know, you know, about the funeral and everything and what's going on. But we sure want to encourage you and, and, uh, and do all that we can do. Amen. 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 And be a help, okay? So um, you um, you let us know, and uh, we'll be praying for the family, be praying for Sean's mother and dad. And I know that's what that's what's on her mind, and uh, Reginald. And so um, be praying, be praying, okay? Asking God for help. Asking God for grace. Let's have a special prayer right now. Father, we do pray. And pray for Tina, pray for Aaron, and praying a special prayer, dear Lord, for the family. And I know she's burdened for her family and, and also the rest of uh, the loved ones. Uh, comfort and encourage them this week. It's going to be a difficult week, but you give grace. You give strength. You, you give Holy Spirit power. And, and you, you give um, comfort. And I pray you give comfort in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so you notice, in, and thank you for your prayers, but notice in your bulletin here, this one day revival, you see the West Coast is coming through here with the singing group, I want you praying, it's, it's going to be here before we know it, and that, and that right, the 26th is going to be here before we know it, you see, okay, and, um, and then right after that, you got Hiles Anderson group, June 2nd, see that there, it's going to happen quickly, one day revival, see, and then, if you notice on on your bulletin here, it's hard to believe before you know it. You know, I mean, the, our, our rare conference reaching all all the human race. We, 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 you know, we used to say so much, reaching all races everywhere. But we we're, we're striving to get out of that bad habit, saying races it ain't different races. It's only one race, one Adam's race. When you start talking races, some white people think they're superior over blacks. And blacks think they're superior over whites. Or whatever ethnic group it is. When it's one race. Amen. One human race. Amen. So it's hard to, you know, we've got to change our vocabulary. <laughs> you know, let's do all of the human race. Amen. 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 Because everybody's important. Amen. 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 And we're on level ground. Amen. Amen. And so um, it'll be here before we know it. It's a rare, uh, we, it's, it's emphasizing on the black neglected mission field, the black community, uh, the great need of independent fundamental Baptist churches, but with white preachers and black preachers going to these areas, not just starting a black church. Get it? See the difference? We want to start a New Testament independent Baptist church, fundamental Baptist church, reaching all different ethnic groups. Amen. Amen. Pushing it. Amen. Pushing it. Whether it be white or black guy go down there, quit saying black church. Get out of that. Amen. We're in 2000, what, 20, 22. 22. Isn't that right? Amen. This is in 1950. Amen. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. They may got away with that stuff back then. You ain't going to get away with too much today, in our day and time. Amen. Amen. All right? So it's really um, a rare type of Bible conference. And uh, it is affecting people. It's touching people's lives. Preachers are getting touched. Um, we've got a white preacher that said, God... God took that prejudice out of my heart. He wasn't going to come because I was black. He told me that. But he got right with God in our conference. Amen. 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 And in those days, they thought it was a sin for you to get married from another race. How stupid. How stupid. Amen. How idiotic. But that's the ignorance. And we watched him change. The one pastor, he was really at me. And then his son said, Dad, you know, shared the word of God. Loves his dad in a nice way. And they talk. And dad says, you're right. <laughs> Right, <laughs> they ain't a sin to intermarry with another another race. <laughs> he got right, isn't that right? Amen. And that, that's it's exciting. You see God moving. Amen. 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 Start seeing a change. You said some of these black students used to go to these colleges, and, and 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 the leaders used to say, "You can't date this white one. Don't even think about talking to that one." That stuff stopped. Huh. <laughs> some a number of them got right with God on that one. Amen. Amen. All right, let's move on, friend. Amen. <laughs> Before they call me the troublemaker. Amen. But but it's everything's fine, friend. Amen. Amen. Everything's fine. Isn't that right? Amen. 
Everything's all right in my father's house. Because when we show them in the book, amen, amen. they got to agree with God. Now, and so pray for the conference. Pray to the Lord. Use it for his glory and for his honor. We're striving to get things done before the conference, okay? And we've gotten a lot done. We thank God so much. And um, uh, thank God for you rallying together. Painting going on. Cleaning going on. And um, uh, so hopefully soon we'll get that drop ceiling up there and, and to get the paved um, parking lot there the paved and, um, you know, um, the pavements, things like that. And so I want you to be praying for these upcoming weeks. We just want to get some, um, more done. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that's going to take more time with replacing all the windows, you know, and that's thousands and thousands of dollars of work. But our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask. We're doing it for his glory. We're getting, for his honor. Amen. And um, before the conference, I remember you were leaving and you, and you came back. And by the time you came back, this whole auditorium was painted. It was painted. Paid thousands of dollars. It all painted. Amen. All, all painted. Amen. And it looked beautiful. You walked in and said, what in the world? How in the world has this thing got done? Amen. Amen. And it would be a blessing if we, we can see the uh, same thing going on when you get back. A number of things going on. Amen. Let's everybody stand, please, if we will. Okay? On your envelope, you can see, you can designate it. You can designate it Nehemiah Project if you want to give above your tithe on, you know, on these things and that we mentioned. We want to keep up with all these things, all right, with missions while you're doing this. Keep up with your tithe. And, and the Royal Bible Conference, we're going to give love offerings. Look at these speakers. Look at the speakers. Look at your, these are speakers. <laughs> Look. Uh, look at the speaker. Aaron, Aaron uh, all, all thank God so much. Uh, Aaron Snodderly, you're going to love him. What a man of God. Uh, Dr. Shelton Smith, oh, what a man of God. Oh, look at Tuesday, uh, Pastor Danny Brandon. My, oh, my. Pastor Bobby Leonard. Wow, look at here. Pastor Tommy Lindsay. Uh, Pastor Ellen Black, Pastor Jason Ivey, Pastor Mike Samples, Pastor Tony Green, Pastor L L L L L Liddell, uh, Lamp Liddell, um, Brother Danny, my son. Look, 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 we're excited. Amen. But listen, this is, this is the thing. It's going to take sacrifice. And God always takes care and provides. And love offerings, motels, traveling expense. Some of you are already uh, adding $1,000. And all this, it costs money. It costs money. Our God is a big God, Amen. and uh, he has helped us in the past, Amen. and he'll help us with these upcoming events. Amen. But on your envelope, put there, we'll see it, Rare Bible Conference, and whatever, as the Holy Spirit leads you. Just remember, he that soweth sparingly shall reap what? Sparingly. sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap what? Bountifully. bountifully. Amen. That's the way God is. That's the scripture. Whatsoever man sows, he reaps. I looked at in life after pastoring 37 years. By the way, we're going to celebrate 37 years. On that Friday, we're going to have a wonderful dinner celebration. Amen. Amen. And uh, it's going to be exciting after the service. And, uh, you know, my son Danny will be preaching to us and sharing with us the word of God as we eat and celebrate and have a banquet. Amen. And I'll tell you, there's not an Emmy Award or Oscar Award can touch us. Amen. Amen. And we ain't got to worry about nobody slapping somebody. Somebody say amen. amen, amen, amen. And that's what happened. This, we don't know what happened. <laughs> the, 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 the devil got that thing. And <laughs> one of those celebrities got slapped in the midst of the but, but But if we did have that, we'll take them right to the prisons and jail. Amen. Call the state troopers. Amen. We won't permit it. We won't, we won't let them off the hook. Okay? Amen. Now, on the serious side, we're going to have a great time with amen. the Lord. Isn't that right? Amen. But we'll celebrate 37 years and give God the praise. And friend... I count it a great honor and a great blessing to be able to pastor all these years. And, and so many uh, pastors um, have resigned or fell, fell into immorality and, and so many things that happened. And, uh, and there's a number of them that have died. I've, I'm very fortunate, by God's grace, me and my precious wife, for us to uh, be here serving the Lord. We don't count that lightly. God has been extra gracious and merciful to us. Amen. It is. I, I tell you, I, I, I talk to churches that have been through several pastors in the last 20, 30 years. Several pastors. God's been gracious. God's been gracious. Thank God, Shawnee, you come back. Reginald, you come back in the churches. By the grace and mercy of God, we're still here. Amen. Lights are still on. Amen. You ain't got to guess. Well, I wonder to have Pastor Barnett going to have service today. I wonder if Grace Bob Baptist Church is going to have service. You know we're going to be here. Amen. 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 Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. So we, we praise the Lord. Amen.
We, we, we praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, Brother Burley loves you. I'm sure he wants to say a thing and pray over the offering. And, and he wants to let, let, let you know how much he, he loves you and appreciates you. And we love him and love his family. You make sure you let the children know. And some of them out of town coming to meet you in Arizona. He makes sure you let them know. Pastor Barnett said in church, says that we, we love them. We love them. And, and relay that to them. Yes, sir. And that goes for the ones in Atlanta, too. Amen. When you talk, I know you're going to talk to them. Amen. You better let, let them know. Pastor Paul says, hey, why don't you know he loves you and the church loves you here? Amen, amen. Stick that in there. Amen, amen, amen. Don't you forget about us. Amen, amen. <laughs> I know you won't. You go ahead, buddy. He, amen, you amen. go ahead. Say a word. Amen. amen. Thank you for uh, thank you for your prayers. Please pray for us. God give us safety and uh, Lord will watch over us, protect us, give us a safe trip there. Definitely Shauna and uh, Reginald, we're gonna be praying for you all. But my heart just broken over Doug and I remember Doug was in my Sunday school class. I never forget teaching Doug. And uh, and one of the kids asked me this morning, I said, well, maybe maybe feel real old. And he said, uh, he said, you talk Doug too? I said, yeah, I talk Doug. <laughs> I think Elijah asked me that. <laughs> Elijah, Elijah said, Doug was in your class too? I said, yeah, I had Doug too. <laughs> I said, yep, I said, I have taught a lot of kids through the years, and um, and uh, we've been around for a long time. And uh, thank God for it, Amen. And we still still going for Jesus and. Definitely be praying for the family and the God to give the grace at this difficult time. I know it's, it's heartbreaking, but thank God he's in a better place now and um, with Jesus now. And, and God going to give you all grace to this difficult time. Definitely going to miss Doug. And um, so we'll definitely pray about that. Um, and um, so definitely pray for us. They, and, and they said, I know you're talking about nuclear, but they said, oh, Putin, Putin might got, got cancer. You heard about that? Oh, oh. So. God maybe maybe God dealing with him. Maybe, maybe God dealing with him. Maybe God, God saved the man. Maybe God, maybe God has saved the man. Amen. He gets saved. Amen. Amen. So we're praying to get saved. Amen. God is humble him. Amen. But we need to pray for the people of Ukraine, and um, and we definitely need to keep praying for them, and that this this will end, and that the, you know just a lot of people are suffering because of this 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 unnecessary war. And so let's just pray for those people there and pray that God provide every need and, and uh, bless our time uh, of our Bible conference coming up and all the things we're doing around the church. We, we, we came back from uh, California last year and all this was done. It was absolutely beautiful. And so who knows what we'll see when we come back this time? <laughs> Amen. Who knows? So let's pray and ask the Lord blessing. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've been doing at Grace Bible Baptist Church and just... Uh, Miracle after miracle, uh, the blessing after blessing, Lord, you have been what you have done and what we have seen and got a chance to witness of the, the great power and miracles of God. We have seen that you have done at Grace Bible Baptist Church. Thank you how you blessed us this morning and all the visitors that we had, Lord, the baptistry, baptistry of been stirred and to baptism. And God, we just thank you what you're doing. Continue to bless us, continue to help us, keep pressing on for the Lord. And we pray that you just uh, provide our every need and bless our church, dear Lord, and the great work that you're doing. We give you the glory and we thank you for what you're going to, going to do in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Joy. All right. All right. We're going to have a special at this time, and I'm going to ask you uh, to be in a state of mind of worship and tithes and offerings. Some people might be, um, you know, text giving at this time, or you go to the website, Grace Bible Baptist Church, and um, you can Google that. It'll pop right up, or gbbc.us, and um, different ways that you can give online. So people are worshiping God that way, um, praising God, thanking God right here for all that God's done for us, and praying. So um, you pray for uh, Sister Joy. She uh, sings. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you bless. Um, Holy Spirit, that you be glorified and praised. And thank you for every giver. You already blessed and bless them again. Bless each of us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. God bless you. So many souls have tested him throughout the course of time. So many still reach out to him with broken hearts and mind. And every one of them will say that at exception that they find that Jesus never fails. Even in the days of old, he brought his people through. And though he came to show his love, he died for me and you. And then he rose again to prove that every story had been true. That Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. You might as well get thee behind me, Satan. You cannot prevail because Jesus never fails sometimes this road brings trouble i find so hard to bear i know i could not make it without jesus being there it's so encouraging to know however deep we're in despair that jesus never Fails. So what can I do to prove to you? Tell me how can you deny? So all the facts and mysteries It's all so cold and dry And on the witness stand of your life I'll be the first to testify That Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. You might as well get thee behind me, Satan. You cannot prevail because Jesus never fails. You might as well get thee you cannot prevail because Jesus never fails. Amen. Amen. I, I thought Joy was singing a solo. That was a duet to Patrice Burley and Joy. Give him a hand. Cheer him on. Amen. I was wondering how Joy going to sing that one as a solo. Let's everybody stand, please. Amen. God bless you. That's a wonderful duet. Amen. All right, wonderful. Brother Burley's coming, and he's going to um, lead you in a song here, Victory, Victory in uh, Jesus, page 336, and, uh, and we're going to sing Victory, Victory in Jesus. Amen. And we have the victory in Jesus. Isn't that right, friend? Amen. I'll never forget when I first got saved. Could you imagine that? Almost 40, whoa, over 40 years. I'm getting old as I speak. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, watch it. Okay. Not too old. Okay. All right. Forty four decades. And I got saved, I'll tell you, from the projects to the Pope. A year later I was in Bible college. But we had sang this song so many times. Faith Baptist Church in Wilcock, Connecticut. Oh, this we're we're still singing it. There's something about this song. Amen. Something precious about it. Amen. Because there's victory in Jesus, isn't it? Amen. God bless our visitor back here. Yeah, she shouldn't be alone back there, you know. She, God bless you. You know, we, she came from the rescue. She's, she's going back tonight. She has such a wonderful spirit, you know. I told her we'll take her somewhere this afternoon. She said, no, let's walk around and, and all this, do what she got to do. And she was outside waiting, and, and we'll, we'll get her back. But she don't need to be by, by herself there. That's a, that's a visitor. That's a visitor.
Well, I'll wait. I'll just wait. That's a visitor. That's, that's somebody's daughter. Amen. Amen. That, 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 that's somebody's um, sister or whatever. Amen. Could be somebody's mother. I don't know if you've ever been to a church that didn't feel welcome. I've been there. And I know we're, the, we're not this type of church. Amen. And I thank God for our people. I mean that. We've, we've got some of the best people in the world. Amen. And I don't believe ever our people would do anything intentional. I know they wouldn't. I know they wouldn't. Amen. Most of our people. Same way there at First Baptist, right, Brother Reginald? Am I right? Uh, am I right, Shauna? <laughs> <laughs> Shauna, I can tell some stories about Shauna. <laughs> Brother Reginald, you got to change woman. <laughs> we dinner this week, I ain't gonna pick on her, okay? <laughs> We're here to comfort her. <laughs> okay. God bless you, Shauna. Amen. Okay, but that they they are that way. Amen. Amen. And um and you walk through the auditorium, tell the truth. There's greeters that'll be standing right there greeting you. Right there. Amen. But that's the way you precious people are. That's why I, I, want, to, uh, I want our visitor to, to feel so, so loved and, and encouraged and helped. Amen. 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 But I, I've been there, friend. I've been there. I'll be honest with you. They didn't, it's like they didn't even care if I was there or not. Not that I don't want any praise. Not that I'm not any pride or anything like that. Everybody, there's nothing wrong wanting someone to be friendly to you. Because you're friendly to people. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. You know? And uh, when, you, when, when, you, when, you, when you see pastors acting like that. Pastors. Shame on it. Shame on it. Same Pastors ought not to be that way. Isn't it right? Same oh, well. I thank God you're not that way. 336, victory in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Three, three, six. All right. 336 in your songbook, victory in Jesus. Amen. And then we'll sing this hymn song here. And um, all three verses. Amen. I heard an old, old story How our Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood atoning Then I repented of my sins And won the victory Victory, oh victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and now my love is due him. He plunged me to victory. Beneath the cleansing flood I heard about his healing Of his cleansing power revealing How he made the lame to walk again And caused the blind to see And then I cried, dear Jesus Come make him my broken spirit and somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood i heard about a mansion he was built for me in glory and i heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea 
about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is due him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood amen amen, amen. would you open up your bibles remain standing if you will okay we're gonna have the scripture reading psalms 107 psalms 107 open your open the word of god if you will psalms 107 brother burl is reading verse one by himself lifting up his voice and you're reading every other verse lifting up lifting up your voice every other verse and i want to put a star right there by verse nine you know, underline that phrase and put a star by it if you if you would like in verse nine it will be our text verse It'll be our text verse for he satisfieth the longing soul and those on social network always looking for titles only jesus can satisfy and that right friend only jesus can satisfy let the church say amen and so that's what we're titling tonight. Only Jesus can satisfy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Only Jesus can satisfy. Amen. And he is the one that's going to take care of it all for us and help us. Isn't that right? Amen. 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 107, 1 through 9, if we will. Okay? And 1 through 9. Psalms 107, 1 through 9. Thank you so much. Amen. Okay, again, uh, Psalm 107, verse 1 through 9. We'll read these verses together. I'll read the first verse, and uh, you read the second verse, and so on, all the way down to verse 9. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and he fills the hungry soul with goodness. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for the reading of your word tonight. And Lord, we pray now you bless the preaching of God's word. We pray that you fill path with the, with the spirit of God to give him liberty and power tonight as he preaches. Help us, Lord, to listen, Lord, attentively to all that is said. And Lord, may you be glorified through, uh, through everything. And we'll praise you for it all. May soul be saved and life be saved and saved and Christians be encouraged in the Lord. And we ask these things in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I have some good days. I have some hills to cry. I have some weary days and some lonely nights. But when I, when I look around and I think things over. All of my good days outweigh my bad days. I won't complain. Sometimes the 
clouds hang low, I can hardly see the road. I ask the question, Lord, Lord, why, why so much pain? But He What's best for me out of my weary eyes I can't see so I just say thank you Lord for being so good to me God been good to me he been good to me more than this whole world can ever be he been good to me he dry my tears away turn my midnight into days all I got to say is thank you Lord for being so good to me I have some good days I have some hills to cry I have some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I, when I look around and I think things over all of my good days. Outweigh my bad days, I won't complain. God been good to me. He been so good to me. More than this whole world can ever be. He been good to me. He dries our tears away. Turn our midnights into days. All I got to say is thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I've been lied on. But I thank you, Lord, the bill's overdue. I don't know where the money's coming from, but I thank you, Lord. I would, but I won't. I could, but I won't. I won't complain. Brother Pentry, and thank every one of you. Uh, the special music choir, thank you. Uh, congregation music, you, you sang, thank you. You've been a blessing to me. I want to be a blessing to you. In Psalms 107, and um, for he satisfy the longing soul. My, my friend, nothing can satisfy. Nothing can satisfy next to Jesus Christ. You never be satisfied till you let Jesus satisfy you. Let the church say amen there. Amen. For he satisfied my longing soul. I'll tell you, I thank God for the psalmist. I thank God they went through tough times, hard times, especially King David. He, he went through so much. He's been through his ups. He's been through his down. He had his wealth. He had his fame. He had his power. But know, he had a, know, know that what they had to find out, friend? Only Jesus can satisfy. That's right. That's right. Another one. Another one. That's right. On the news. Uh, on the news. Another one. Yes, you're going to be hearing about it. In the 70s. Why? Why? Why not satisfied? 
Why depression? Why? You got the millions? You got all the fame? Because only Jesus can satisfy. Okay, how many? Um, um, oh, I, I think our brothers have wonderful vacation centuries. They're going to enjoy it. And praise the Lord and the family. We want you. We, we're rejoicing with you. Uh, there's not too many people that work as hard as you are. But you want to know what? You know what satisfies them? Jesus Christ. And things I'm going to mention tonight, Sister Teresa. I thank God for it. You'll see some beautiful things. Some people think that's what it is. <laughs> thank God for vacations we have. <laughs> some come back. I don't believe it's going to be in your case, Brother Brother Sister Teresa. They need a vacation. <laughs> but thank God it's not going to be that It's not going to be that way. <laughs> Hey, man, but you, you include prayer. You, you include the Bible. We're going to go over some things tonight. But there's people that have so much. And they can't enjoy it. You can't school God out. And my heart breaks. I don't want to hear about these celebrities. And neither do you. You see? And some people, I heard preachers say, that's the one that, that's the, you know, what, we, well, how do I get that message? But, no, seriously, that's, that's the, we, we don't bash them if they don't want to watch the news, okay? I want to keep up, but if Russia is at my corner, I want to know if they're around the corner. <laughs> if, the, if the Chinese, <laughs> surely, brother, brother, <laughs> before we go out to Arizona, <laughs> but pre, we, don't, we don't knock them, <laughs> but leave us alone, man. God, leave us alone. And then that's why these white preachers get up. This is what they say. Um, I don't see any race problem nowhere. Anywhere. What? You got a church that's all white and there ain't no, ain't no problem? They're all black? And they're talking about on social media what we're going to do with this race problem? And not one black family's coming to your church? You don't know what's going around the country? And I hear him say, it, it depresses me. I understand that. Well, that's what prayer is for. Amen. I want to form my people. Amen. I want you to know these stinking hoodlums are coming and knocking people down, taking their pocketbooks, smashing them. <laughs> I want to know. I want to warn my people. Stinking murder out loose. I want to warn them. <laughs> I'm a shopper. No, seriously, they want to be that. That's the way. No, don't knock me for knocking the news. Watching the news. Thank God for Fox. But if we didn't have Fox, and we also we had CNN, oh my, we'd be me most men miserable for sure. <laughs> no, no, little humor there. But we, we you, you ought to thank God for those that are trying to help conserve and free speech. And, amen. Right to carry, carry arms and, 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 and standing for uh, religious liberty. Amen. Pro life. Amen. But the government won't satisfy. The news media won't satisfy. Only Jesus will satisfy. We can't put all our confidence in the things of this world. Thank God we have these things. But we want to get our satisfaction from Jesus. Isn't that right? So the Bible says he satisfied the longing soul. And I, I want you to know that there's several things that I'm satisfied with and Jesus satisfied me with, and I believe he'll satisfy you with. And, um, and, and, and it's helped me after I got saved. First, first thing we want to talk about tonight, I, I'm satisfied with the old King James Version Bible. Let the church say amen. Yeah. I'm satisfied with the authorized version. I'm, I'm satisfied. Uh, uh, would you turn to uh, Psalms, if you will? Turn to Psalms, if you will, in Psalms chapter 12. Turn there with me. We're going to read some scripture here in Psalms. And I want you to turn in your Bible, if you will, please, in Psalms chapter 12. Psalms chapter 12. Psalms chapter 12. Would you look at, look at it with me, if you will? Look what it says, verse 6. For the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Look at verse 7. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt what? Preserve them from this generation forever. For the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. And that's what we see. We see the wickedness. We see the wicked leadership. And we see it around the world. But I thank God. I, my confidence is not in these wicked men. 
My, my confidence is not in these w wicked liberals. My confidence and satisfaction is in the King James Version Bible. Amen. Look what it says here. The words of the Lord are pure words, the silver tribe and the furnace of earth. Purified seven times. Over and over again, thou shalt keep them. Thou shalt preserve them. We have in our hands the pure word of God. And if you don't have an old King James, I'm not talking about the new one. We got too much new stuff. They all can't be right. They all can't be right. And if you're going to know counterfeit money, you better know real money. I don't need no living Bible. I don't need no, need no fake Bible. I don't need none of this other stuff. I thank God you ain't shaking. I thank God you're not trying to look. You go in the average Christian bookstore today, brother, you'll get dizzy around that place. You'll be shocked what type of Bibles are in that place. And we wonder why people are so messed up. There's got to be a pure word. There's got to be a preserved word. There's got to be a perfect word. It all can't be right. And God has shown us from all these years, this King James Version Bible has worked this authorized version in the English-speaking people. He said he'll keep it. If this is not it, where is it at? 40 years? You're going to tell me I've been preaching out of it? 40 years I've been reading it? Genesis to Revelation. Genesis to Revelation. When you finish it, you go back and you read it over again. One thing I constantly try to repeat to you is read the Bible. You're never going to be satisfied. You're never going to get what you can get in every storm of life, in every trouble. You've got to be in this book that will keep you. Meditate on it. Psalms chapter 1. If you meditate day and night, you prosper. Don't you want to prosper? Amen. Amen. Psalms 119, every verse, every verse is about the word of God. Every verse. Amen. All those verses. Amen. The largest psalm on the word of God. Amen. Second Peter in chapter 1. I want you to turn there, if you will, please. Second Peter in chapter 1. Second Peter. If you will, please, in chapter 1. Not 1 Peter, but we want 2 Peter, please. Knowing this verse, well, actually, verse 19, we have also a more sure word of what? Prophecy. Warrant you do well that you take heed as a light unto the, uh, shineth in the dark place until the day dawn and day star rise in your hearts. Knowing this verse, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any proper interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were what? Moved by the Holy Ghost. We also have a more sure word of prophecy. Compared to what? Compared to what, what, is, he, what is he saying here? Look, look, look at um, chapter 1 here in verse um, uh, 17 here. Chapter 1 verse uh, 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 17. For he received uh, from God... Look at here in verse 17. Um, uh, the Father, honor and glory. And then there came such a what? There came such a voice to him from where? From, from, from the excellent glory. Uh, this is my beloved what? Son, in whom I am what? Well pleased. And, and this voice which came from where? Heaven. We heard. When with him in the holy mouth. We have also a more what? Sure word. So what is more sure, what's more guaranteed than somebody come and telling you they heard God's voice? The word of God. Amen. I'm talking about the, this accurate the word of God uh, uh, preserved. Um, um, uh, in Sp uh, 2 Timothy 3. Uh, uh, turn there, if you will. Uh, 2 Timothy, uh, tur turn there. Uh, turn there, there, please. 2 Timothy. Uh, uh, love to hear the pages rattling. Uh, I've heard of some people being too lazy to turn to it. You, you wouldn't believe it, would you? I said they died for the scripture. I said they put in prison so you can have the scripture. I'm talking about spoiled brat. They rotted in jail to have Bible studies and smuggled Bibles and loved this book and kissed this book as one girl got a bullet in her head in one of these crazy places, North Korea type of, 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 of wicked communist type, Putin stinking crazy man killing Ukraine type. Came to that girl, and the, the, the whippy sticking preacher spit on the Bible. 
little stinking wimps, spit. And that girl, it says, had to be a teenage girl, they said it was, and kissed that by, put a bullet in her head. You can't even turn the pages. By the way, thank you so much for using the Holy Bible scriptures and papers and rather than looking on your phone, getting distracted by email. I'll wait till I get some amens out there. <laughs> iPads and computers. <laughs> thank God you just set your desk up. <laughs> thank God you just set your standing desk up. God bless my sister pastor. He got another standing desk. He, he donated his. <laughs> he did some trees. He donated. Thank God for the old one. I take it. <laughs> And I wonder what the new one looked like. <laughs> Stand up. Thank God y'all don't bring your tables and, and, and get your computers while I'm preaching. <laughs> and look the Bible that way. I'd rather for you not to be distracted by some text. I watched this kid was just playing, man. I can't believe it. The preacher actually gave the kid a phone to play toys with. What in the world? Let's don't be deceived, friend. This is God's word, man. So I asked him to come in this auditorium and just think of popcorn and chips and Coca-Cola. This ain't no stick in the uh, uh, movie house. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Brother, we come in the presence of God. Yeah. There's some people in this room that talk with God and God talks to them. He talks to us. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture. Does it say some scripture? Does that include Today's date and year? You better believe it does. All scripture is given by what? Inspiration of God is profitable for what? Doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It said a man was preaching, man, he's preaching. I don't know if you've been to New York City. Some of you ain't been there yet, but you're going to go. It's a jungle. It's a jungle. Just exactly what you see on the news. And yeah, I tell you, it's even, it's even more, more mind-boggling than you can imagine. People everywhere. And it said the preacher, he just wanted to get a crowd, man. He was up there. And, and, uh, he, he, and so he had the word of God. Nobody, he's out there trying to get a crowd. Nobody would come. They just ignored him walking around. And finally, he put that Bible there. He put that Bible, he said, he said, it's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Hey! It's alive! People came, people said, what in the world? He, he jumped up and he said, the King James Bible! Oh, the it's alive! It's alive! It's alive! And he gave the plan of salvation. Now, I'm not saying you got to get a crowd that way. <laughs> but he got himself a crowd. I've been up there in Boston. I preached. I screamed up there, walked in the wall. I couldn't get a crowd for anything. Maybe I should have tried that. All right? Some of them would get vexed as I was screaming and preaching and yelling out there in the park. But <laughs> it's called open air preaching, friend. Amen. 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 Open air. Amen. I've been there. And uh, what he was trying to say is this word of God is inspired. Your math book is not inspired. Your history book is not inspired. Uh, hey, look up here. I guarantee you, if you, your mind will be set on how great this book is, how alive this book is. There's times I've preached on things, ain't nobody said anything to me. Nothing. And I've had people walk in this auditorium and said, how did you know what was on my mind today? It's not what, what I... It's God, this book, this word, this Bible. You read it from Genesis to Revelation. You meditate on it. The devil doesn't want you to hear the word of God. That's why he loves it when you walk in and out, when you get distracted. The devil doesn't want you to hear it. There's a real devil. He comes to steal God's word away. And I thank God you're here. You fought to get here. I guarantee, I guarantee you pay attention. God will do something in your heart. You watch it. It's time to get up and go to the bathroom. It's time to get up and go here and go there. You watch people. Look over here while I'm preaching. Look over there. Look at this. I don't know. So I'm looking at this guy. Counting the tiles. So I'll be glad when that drops in when we get here. <laughs> well, you're going to help pay for it? 
How about you go sacrifice and give to towards it? <laughs> Come on. How about you go sacrifice towards it? The biggest givers are the ones that read this book and meditate in this book. The ones that sacrifice the most are in the book. The most faithful people are the ones in the book. I told you, any problem you're going through, check out your walk with God. That, that I answer. That I answer. What was the last time you won a soul of Christ? That I answer was the last time. I love you. I'm not picking on you. I'm telling you, you need to walk with God, talk with God, love this book. It'll affect every area of your life. Every relationship you have, it's a, it goes to a Bible problem. I'm not saying it's wrong to watch TV, but you listen, very little, sometimes none, none. Can I ask you a question? Well, in fact, anybody here, I love you. When's the last time you read the Bible through? When's the last time you read it through? And every time you read the whole thing, when you read it again, you're going to get something new. Why I throw that out to you, that, that teenage girl in that communist country, and she um, borrowed. Why does it got to be a teenage girl? Hey, teenage boys, we need some of you to be leaders more than some of these teenage girls. Was borrowing the Bible. They only had one <laughs> in that wicked country, throwing people in prison and all that for having the Bible. And he let her do it for a year. And she, here it is, you know, every, each week. And said, I don't need it anymore. I didn't copy every word, every, every bit of it, every Dot and tittle. They took me a year, or whatever, whatever it was, two years, whatever it was. But she was, did a lot of writing. It is said. She said, I ain't going to copy no word of God with my fingers and my hands. And that's because you're spoiled. We got so many of them. We got them in front of your pew. We got them in back of your pew. We got it on the phone. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I meditate and listen to it. I meditate and listen to it. I got it on my phone. I don't think nothing gets it. I'm like, I'm, I'm, sometimes look at it. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. None at all. But I do believe you need to do both. I do believe there's a time in church we ought to be looking at the Word of God, meditating on the Word of God, and I believe on our own we need to meditate and look at it. And, and, and God give us eyes, let's use our eyes. God give us ears, let's use our ears. And I believe there's a time that we need to find a time when really there's no distra distraction. And I've been guilty, you've been guilty. I don't know what it is. I, I believe it's the flesh. We sometimes don't like. Let's let's do. I'm not gonna say nothing. Shh, shh. We don't like that. Let's cut TV on. Let, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> You're in the house. <laughs> Still quiet, right? <laughs> Put the radio on. <laughs> No, I'm not saying we all got to live like that all the time. But we all need quiet time. We all need time to go through Genesis to Revelation. All the way through. All the way through. Amen. I'm satisfied with God's word. I'm satisfied. I want you to look at here, if you will, in Matthew in chapter 18. I want you I want you to turn there, if you will. In Matthew chapter 18, please. Matthew chapter 18. Would you turn there? It says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, underline this, there am I in the what? In the midst of them. Would you underline that? Would you, would, would, would you hi, highlight, highlight it there? Hi, highlight that there, please, if you will. We'll come back there in a moment. 
Look at uh, Matthew chapter 16. And I want you to look at verse 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my what? I will build my church. The Catholics think that he, God built <laughs> the church on Peter, little pebble. How crazy. How sickening. How sickening. The church is not built upon Peter. It's upon the rock. Upon this rock. That's Jesus. Jesus is the rock. And nothing's going to satisfy you more. Nothing's going to satisfy you more than the church. Nothing's going to nothing's going to satisfy you more than the Bible. Nothing's going to nothing. Listen, you can try all the things in the world if you want to. There's nothing like God showing up in the church when I got saved. I thank God I got saved in New Testament local Baptist church. Long hair, hippie braids on my back in the nightclubs and used the F word. I couldn't talk without swearing, brother. I'd be the biggest stinking <laughs> punk you listen you don't know the miracle but brother sister i'm telling you i i i said no more i threw i turned down a scholarship in berkeley music college boston had my picture on the paper project boy gets a scholarship and i had to go to my music director and say i'm going to bible college i'm gonna preach i went to my pastor and i said i, I had a, i had a dream i had a dream I, i'll never forget that dream i was preaching and my pastor was preaching and i tell you i just it just i, I just I, I tell you i wanted to pray and i did i preach you, well, you said why are you bringing all that up because you know, I was praying with old, playing with older men in the band, making money, and I'll never forget. And I said, um, I said, um, no, thank you, no, I said, no more. They couldn't believe it. They said, Bob, they called me Bob. They said, come on, we're gonna make money next week. I said, money, money. And I turned it down. I was, uh, I'll be honest with you, I was miserable. I was going to nightclub and I was going to church Sunday morning. Nightclub Sunday morning. Nightclub at night, Saturday, so I'm going to church. Can you imagine that? Independent, fundamental, Baptist. All this happened within a year's time. That stuff couldn't satisfy me. That, uh, they're sitting there snorting cocaine and on dope and they're drinking. Hey, Bob, have some. I just, can you imagine, just as I am, invitation Sunday, I was in the nightclubs. Brother, I was playing that bass guitar, and brother, I, I, I'll tell you, I, I wouldn't touch that dope. I wouldn't touch, I see what liquor did to mama. I see what liquor did to daddy. I, I see what that stinking liquor did to my siblings. And I said, I'm going to hate that stink. Somebody say amen. Brother, I'm no better than anybody, but I just found out the church satisfies better. The word of God satisfies better. Say amen, please. I was talking about all the deaths, all the deaths that happened in my family. And, um, and I'm sure, Charlotte, you know I'm talking about Reginald tonight. You're here and you. You've seen a lot of it in your life, around you, in life. And it's a heartbreaker. Uh, bro brother, my, my brother Ben, you, you know him. He was hyperventilating. He was passing out. They couldn't take, they just couldn't take it when my parents died. And the alcohol couldn't help them. I'm no better than any of my siblings. The dope couldn't satisfy. And friend, let me tell you something. It's only by the grace and mercy of God. You hear me? It's only by the grace and mercy of God that you and I don't go out and get drunk. Um, it was a pastor. And I, I know it breaks your heart. I know it breaks your heart. It was a pastor. That um, a pastor, a pastor that was drunk driving and I believe hit and run that has to resign in his church. The people are devastated. I mean, 
mean, that'd be, that'd be like Pastor Barnett or Brother Burley. No, he won't do it. His wife would kill him. My wife would kill him. So we don't worry about it happening to us. We'd be dead. We'd be dead chickens. <laughs> You'll hear about us. <laughs> You'll be here about us. <laughs> Not this message. I say that to keep us in fear. <laughs> but, 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 but we love God. And we forgot. God. But there's no telling what you might do. Hey, if a pastor did that, what, did, what, what are you going to do when you're not paying attention? You're looking on your phone when you come to church. What could happen to you? What could happen to you? If you don't pay attention to church. If he did that to a pastor, that pastor for years. What would he do to you, you skip church? What would he do with you, you don't read your Bible, Genesis to Revelation? I told you this morning, I used that phrase, they're better. Nobody better than nobody. But I just feel these, some of these pastors are better than I am. These Christians are better. You, you feel that way? We shouldn't, do, we shouldn't be that way. We say, hey, look, look, look what happened to them. What do you think the devil will do to us? Who are you? Who are you? They wrote books. Elijah is going to graduate, Lord willing. This year, right, Elijah? I said, look up here. I, I said, Elijah, he's been watching, observing. He's going to make some decisions. Look, hey, son. Hey, son, I, I know. I, look, look, look. look. I, people tell me there's no hope for your generation, no hope for you. Look what happened to that pastor. There's more hope. Look at, look at the sorrow. Look at the misery. Look at the divorce. Look at the stinking of jail, the prison, son. Look at what they had. Look at the honor. Look how good God was good to them. And they chose a stinking whore. And they chose to be unfaithful with their woman. Do you know the headache? Do you know the heartache? Every day of their life, they got to live with that. And a sin is ever before them. And when you look at that, that'll motivate you to live for the Lord. We got them. They went to Bible college. You've been to Bible college. They're out there whoring around, fornicating. They're out there getting drunk. Some of them can't even make it back to church. Hey, they ain't got no strength to go soul winning, work on a bus route, do anything. Ain't hey, doing nothing. Doing nothing. Nothing in church. Ain't even ushering. Nothing. Nothing. Not singing. Nothing. Just coming and sitting. I thank God you're sitting. Hopefully you get right with God today. Do something. At least tithe. Ten percent of your income. Start with that. And then God can rebuke the devourer. In Malachi 3. Amen. Slap the devil in his face. Say you ain't going to devour them. Those are my tither. That's my gather. And then you stop robbing God. It won't be so hard to go soul winning. Amen. Won't be so hard to win souls. Won't be so hard to serve God like he wants you to. And be faithful in church. And get involved and serve. Amen. But then you start tithing and giving, you treat your wife right. You treat your wife right. Treat your husband right. Amen. I said this morning, Pastor, you're the type of pastor you can make somebody happy and encourage people. Next thing you want, so you can make us sad, and then you get us all mad at you. <laughs> you bipolar? <laughs> no, no, it's just the whole book. God's that way. Read it. Next thing you know, he's throwing fire on him. Next thing, I delight in mercy. <laughs> Next thing, he's comforting them. Next thing, they're eating their own babies. Hello? Sit up, son. Sit up. He start taking the stick and whip and turn over tables. And the next thing he say, be kind. Don't <laughs> be, 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 you know, don't, don't, don't get too rough. <laughs> Hello? He's a God of judgment. He's not a God of righteousness. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of grace. He's a God of love. There's times his love turns to hate. Not for his children. Don't get mixed up with the people of Israel. Don't you get mixed up with the uh, uh, unsaved. God will never hate his children. You ain't no bastard. I'm not cousin either. I just see what sin does. I see, I see the stinking maternity, we call maternity courts, trying to figure out if that, if that kid's theirs. 
I watched the boy cry. I watched the girl cry when they got to get split up from their parents. See what sin does. Been to the stinking funerals. Been to enough of my own and my family. Hate sin. See what it did in my family. See it out and mess my dad's health and mom's health. I hate sin. Don't get on my back when I preach against sin. Trying to warn these kids. Trying to help uh, these young people about to graduate or going to graduate. Get off my back. Trying to help these young girls, young boys. Stay pure. Stay clean. Trying to get them to get satisfied in Jesus. Love the book. Love church. Satisfied with church. With two or three are gathered together, I'm in the midst. And I'm telling you, friend, you can say what you want to. There's a place when we meet together in church and God shows up and satisfies you like nothing else can. He'll talk with you and meet with you in this, in, in, in the local churches all across. I guarantee you, my sister pastor be on vacation and sister Patricia be on vacation. I guarantee they ain't laying out of church. I guarantee you they're going to find them as a house of God where two or three are gathered, a type of independent fundamental Baptist type of church. People not playing games and people want the old fashioned way back to the Bible. I guarantee you he's going to find him a church. Not just any church. Amen. All that you're going through today. Brother Reginald and, and Sister Shauna, all, all that you're going through. God bless you. The wisdom that God's given you. Show up the church. Nothing's going to satisfy you. Nothing, nothing. God's people are the best. I, I'm not saying we're sinless. God's people are the best. I'm not saying you're sinless. I'm saying uh, you're, you're, you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 6. You, 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 God lives in your body. And I know he's, he's everywhere. I know he's omniscient. He's all-knowing. I know he's omnipresent everywhere. He's everywhere. Oh, devil, he's got to run. He's got to run. He's got to run. He's, and he's fast. He's quick. He's, it's not like us, brother. Who knows what kind of stinking demonic uh, energy. Hello? Who knows what type of creatures are running up there as demons? But God's everywhere, brother. That's how big our God is. But also he lives in the body, the temple of, of his people. Amen. 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 Your body is temple of the Holy Ghost. Could you imagine a husband slap that wife? <laughs> I'd be scared. <laughs> First of all, she'll kill me. But <laughs> I'm like a little humor, Fred. Come on, Fred. Fred, come on. Loosen up, Fred. Loosen up. <laughs> I know there's some of you good ladies like to slap the rock. Try to try to smash, try to slap sister Bar. <laughs> Just try to try that with her. <laughs> let, let brother brother try to slap some strip. He'll be like that guy. And he big guy. And this would have said, "I I gotta tell him." <laughs> that guy. That guy got saved, man. Brother, he dropped, man. He come up beating on his wife. Beating on her, man. She, she had all she could take. And, and she came that night. He was waking her up. And she had that pain. I don't know how she did it, buddy. She, bam, hit that guy. <laughs> that guy got right with God. He came, and the preacher asked him, what happened to your nose? Oh, he said, he said oh, my wife, I came home drunk. I staggered and beat on her. I was going to beat on her again. <laughs> oh, she came out of the covers. And she had this. Brian Brian Preacher said, well, well, what happened? Did you get right with God? He said, I got right with God just like that. <laughs> he said, I'm a servant God every <laughs> Servant God every day, son. <laughs> Revival broke up. Huh? Yeah. Right? I thank God for godly husbands in this room. The Bible says you hurt your wife, you hurt yourself, son. You hurt your, you hurt your, you hurt, you hurt, you hurt, you hurt your wife, you, you hurt yourself, sir. You're hurting yourself because you're gonna end the, you're gonna be the other one end up hurt. 
uh, uh, first of all, uh, that body is God's. You don't slap God's. You know, you know what happened to Moses when he hit that rock. You don't go hitting that rock, Moses. I told you to speak to that rock. You don't hit that rock. You don't hit that rock twice. I, I, I'm satisfied with the church. I'm satisfied with my wife, my family. I'm satisfied with God's people. Amen. Yeah. Psalms, very, very quickly in the book of Psalms here, and we got to hurry. Psalms 127. Psalm 127. Psalms 127, 127, 128. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain, they build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waking the bud in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children, the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of the mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord. By the way, we're continuing. The, these are just chapters, but it continues. These are songs, they continue. One after another, one after another. How many of them we, they would sing, we don't know. But it, keep up with the frame of mind, okay? Look at 128. Blessed is everyone that what? Feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be wealthy. Thy wife shall be a what? A fruitful vine by the sides of thine house, thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of the Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Now listen, I'm going to try to help you out with something. God's blessed you with a wife. God's blessed you with a husband. Too much whoremongering going on. Too much stinking adultery going on. I have never seen like this. and never. It's so wicked. It's wicked, brother. It's wicked, sister. I thank God for couples. You're satisfied with each other. God's given you each other. You're not looking for someone else. Ain't the pornography, the stinking garbage and perverts. You guys, you young kids, you, I know you see a bunch of stinking junk. I know you see a bunch of whoremonger going on. Make up your mind, you young kids. And by the way, you'd be a stinking player with all these girls if you start being that way. It's going to be hard for you to be tied down with one woman. There's a time you're going to have to settle down and say, I'm going to get me a wife. I'm going to get me a husband. I'm going to be satisfied with what God gives me. I'm not going to be a greedy, stinking whoremonger. Those are your kids. No, no other man need to be raising those kids. No other woman. I am satisfied, Sister Barnett. And I give God the praise of all Almighty God all these years we've been married. I give God the praise. Amen. It's not going to be long, brother. We're close to that 40 mark. We're very close. Amen. And I'm going to clap my hands by the grace of God to be able to say for decades. Amen. Here we are trying to help these young couples. Could you imagine how stupid it is We've been saved longer than they've been alive. They should be ring. Our phone ought to be ring. You know, we'll ring the bell. Amen. It ought to be ringing. Amen. Want to help them. Amen. Love them. Amen. And I love them, but they can get high-minded, cocky, and prideful. And all we want to do is love you. Amen. Love you. I want your marriage to last long. Now God did that to that preacher. He said it never, he'll never do it to his wife. She said he'll, she'll never do that to her husband. You get out of this book. You get out of your walk with God. You stop serving God like you should. There's no telling what you may do. A God that has fed you. A 
God that has called you, a God that has blessed you with kids, and you can't get out there and get people saved like he told you to do. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How are they going to call on him who they don't believe? How are they going to believe in him who they're going to hear? How are they going to hear without a preacher? How do you expect them to get saved? Your hands are Jesus' hands. Your feet, how beautiful are the feet, and you won't go, you won't go, you won't go. God's been good to you. He's been good. He's been good. Joseph said, how can I do this wickedness in the sight of God? He realized how good God was. You're, hey, hey, look up here. Look up here. That wicked, look up here. That wicked text is coming your way. That wicked email is coming your way. It's coming. That wicked movie's coming. That rated R is coming. That rated X is coming. It's coming. You better strong. That whore's coming. It's coming. You better be strong. You better let God satisfy you. You better let this word of God satisfy you. You better let, you better let God's people. God's people are the best. Not to say sinless. No, I love being around God's people. Run to Sunday school. Run Sunday night. Run, run Wednesday evening. God's people gather, and I want to be around God's people. Could you imagine me watching TV while y'all are gathering together somewhere, serving God? Hello? I want to be here. I want to be here. I said, Pastor, you need to be here. You're the pastor. <laughs> Before I was the pastor. <laughs> they that run with wise will be wise. A companion of fools will be what? Destroy. He that runneth with the wise will be wise. And I beg you, make your friends, Christian friends. Find somebody in church that's serving God. Find somebody in church that loves God. Find some friends. Um, those worldly friends, it's not, it's not, it's not, I'm telling you, 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 you it just, it's just going to, it's going to, it's going to mess you up. I mean, sometimes you're going to have to depart from bad company and come out from among them and be separate. Not that you're better anybody, but God's better. I, um, I love our country. Turn to Luke chapter 7, if you will. Luke chapter 7. You have Matthew, you have Mark, you have Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. For he loveth our nation. And he hath built us a synagogue. In verse 1, now when he had ended all the sayings in the audience of the people, he entered the Capernaum, and a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto his elders of the Jews, beseeching to beg him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this, for he was. Verse 5, what does it say? For he loveth our nation. Look what he did. He built us a synagogue. And we ain't going to read all these verses, but Jesus healed them. Look, look, look. All I'm saying, we need to be satisfied with some things. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied with our nation. I love, I love our, I, I'm going to fight. I don't want the uh, socialists. I don't want the communists destroyed. I'm thinking about our children. I'm thinking about our, but, and by the way, let, let me pause and say this. You know, you know, sometimes, the, the, the fatherless, these bus kids, and, and sometimes, and I, listen, I, 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 I want to I try to help you tonight. Please, i got to be very sensitive. 
Sometimes it's God's will that you adopt children. Listen, you might, God might, be, are you willing? Are you willing? Look, 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 I'm trying to help you. I don't know how many situations I've seen where they wanted children, they could have children. God may lead, I don't know if God's going to lead you that way. I don't know. I really don't know. God can work a miracle and you could have a baby I, if you really want one. I don't know what you want. I just know one thing. God will satisfy your soul. He'll satisfy your soul. And it might be that his will that you don't have any children. It might be you invest in some bus kids and, and I don't know. All I know, you got to love Jesus more than one children. You got to love Jesus more than your husband. You got to love Jesus more than your wife. You got to love Jesus more than your kids. Or you'll never be satisfied. I love our country, but I love the Jesus more than my country. Therefore, I can be satisfied because God blessed America. And there's some people that love your nation. It can be long. June's coming and July and all the flags and the old liberals come around here, the old atheists and socialists and communists that hate our flag. <laughs> I'm going to this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Friend, you can say what you want. Jesus blessed America. Jesus died for this country the world and I'm telling you I'm going to listen they came and they got in the water some of you don't know thousands are trying to get here they're drowning a military man went in the water and he's dead they're trying to smuggle dope in our country get here did you see all those people in the in the trunk of their cars did you see that truck boom body splattered they're trying to get here if our country's so bad, why are they trying to get here this way? I love our country. I love our cities. I love, I, I love the, I love the, um, the, thank God you're going to go on. You're going to see the beauty. And you'll see Arizona. You, you'll see the, <laughs> you see the Grand Canyon already. I don't know if you, <laughs> you can look, on, look down there. I'm not crazy about heights. But <laughs> beautiful, beautiful country. Soldiers have died. 22-year-old is dead. You got problems, I got problems. But you ain't got no problem. It's a big problem this week, Sean. It's not going to be easy. But you want to know what bigger problem is? You got your sweetheart right by you. You got the love of your life right beside you. Shauna, he had children. He's dead. He had a wife. 22. And some of you guys came to stop looking at your phone. What are you going to do when the real storm comes? You better fight, man. If you can't fight tonight, you better beg God to help you. I'm glad you're here, but you got to beg God, man. I thank God you're fighting, but you. But I'm telling you, if you you're going to be another statistic if you don't if you don't catch it. You'll be, you be like the rest of them. You know, they're on the sideline. Satan got him exactly where he wants him. And when he knocks you, he'll go to another one. Amen. Amen. That man is a United States citizen. I went to Ukraine to help them people. No doubt other United States. Says, we, we, we've had newsmen over there from here. They're dead. And I tell you, and the only way some people are going to get concerned when they start dropping bombs over here. Then we get concerned. No, we need to get some concerned right now. Love our country. Pray for our country. I'm satisfied, United States of America. I don't want to be in North Korea. Them basketball stars, want to, they want to kneel the football, whoever they are. They don't want to kneel to the flag. And they want some other flag. Tell them go over there. It's so good. Play your ball over there. Stay, stay over there. I'm satisfied with this country. 
We'll bring them flags out, and I'll tell you, friend, and I, we're, we're going to thank God for what that flag represents. God has blessed this country. We ain't got time to satisfy with the music and the hymn books. You, you go ahead, F cuss words and nasty stinking, all kind of vulgar sex and perverts and stinking sodomites and all that garbage. I, I never understood how God's people listen to that garbage. You go ahead and do it if you want to. Music that make you high, you get high off and you call party off of whatever, whatever make you dance or stinking like in a nightclub. This ain't no stinking steeple, steeple club church. We ain't bringing that contemporary. We ain't gonna bring that stuff I got out of the nightclubs. If you think we're gonna bring that stuff here, all old girls can dance around and shake their stinking stuff. Somebody help me. Get me all stirred up today. Love the old hymns, spiritual songs. Um, I look. I'm gonna say this. I I turn the radio on. Look, I'm the pastor. If I know if I used to battle with Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir, beat of the devil. I'm a pastor. What in God's name is the devil to, doing to you, sheep? If God had to convict me, sneaking guys with long hair braids look like a sticking girl, woman with their sticking britches on, look like men. Every stinking thing under the sun joined that choir for money. Sorry, stinking rats. When the last time they knocked on doors to try to keep somebody out of hell? I love them. Ask if you want to get real mad. When, how many souls you've been knocking on? <laughs> you want to get real mad at you? <laughs> Say, when's the last time you led a soul to Christ? <laughs> now, y'all keep peace in your family. Don't go start fights. <laughs> Don't go start fights. <laughs> Don't you do that. <laughs> There's demonic spirits in Christian so-called music that has the spirit of fornication, the spirit of adultery, the spirit of dope and liquor and pride that have drained people. Satan was the master of music. And by the way, I just mentioned, I, I, threw, I threw Brooklyn Tabernacle um, Choir out there. There's a number of them out there that when I turn the radio on, less than 30 seconds it goes off. The closer you get to God, the more God will expose to you about music or watching the wrong thing or hearing the wrong thing. Okay, very quickly. I don't see anything wrong with it, they say. L look at them. I mean, look, look at the way they're dressing and looking. It doesn't matter. Look at the way they're talking. Look at the way some of them conducting themselves. There's no shame. Their discernment is gone. Gone. And they're trying to get satisfaction in so many different things, and it's not going to satisfy them. It's just not going to do it. That's why you see the families end up in divorce and, and you, you see them want to take their life, want to end their life. That's the big thing today. They want to end their life. That's the big thing. 100,000 have overdosed. 100,000. Everybody in this room knows somebody that has taken their life or has overdeed. Everybody in this room knows somebody. I love them. You love them. They got relatives. You're just too strict. You're just too strict. Yeah. And they get on the social network. You need to stop being so strict. You need to stop being so strict. Can I ask you a question? All these people that had all this liberty, do where they want to go, where they want to go. Young people do their own thing. And, 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 and what, what, what's the, why don't they speak out and say, look, they had all the freedom. Look at, look at that. Look at all the freedom they got. You going to blame the strictness? What about that, that girl? She got pregnant before she was married. He had a baby without getting married. Look at, look at them. They're in jail. They're in prison. 
I mean, same, same parents. One's a drunk. One's a dopehead. Same parents. Same opportunity in church. Prodigal son, same dad. Same dad. What are you going to do? Blame the dad? You can blame the mom? You can blame the pastor? The truth of the matter, that boy, he, he looked for satisfaction. He looked for satisfaction. That money. He got that money. It's all, it's all money, friend. They're working. They got to make that money. Got to make that money. Brother, sister, money slowing you down fully on the money. Let God take care of you. And then the woman and the righteous living and the pig, stinking pig, living in that stinking pig stuff. He came to himself. He didn't get satisfied until he came home to the father. Get the ring, get the robe, get the shoes. <laughs> Come to the father. Amen. And they were satisfied. Prodigals will be satisfied when they find out that the Father in heaven, the Father in heaven, his love, his goodness, his mercy, his grace, his Bible, his church, his Holy Spirit, his will is what's going to satisfy you. Amen. And by the way, the Father said to that son that stayed at home, son, all that I have is yours. What are you having a sticking bad attitude for? Until you get wrapped up in loving me. Until you get wrapped up in seeing how good I am to you. You're going to be sticking miserable. At home. So while you're at home, enjoy yourself. Get wrapped up in me. Love him, the Father in heaven. Love him. Serve him. You get to serve him. You get to love him. You get to work on the bus route. You get to go soul winning. You get to tithe. You get to give. You get to sacrifice. You get, I get to serve God. It's a privilege. It's an honor. And that's what happens to pastors. They get so stinking burnt out because they get wrapped up so much in the church rather than the God of the church. You got to get wrapped up in Jesus, the Jesus of your Sunday school. Amen? You got to get wrapped up in Jesus and love him and serve him, and everything's going to be fine. You're going to make it, Sister Shauna. Brother Reginald, I believe you're going to make it. You want to know why? Because I believe you're determined to get so wrapped up in Jesus. I guarantee you, Reginald ain't going to get mad at nothing I said tonight. Shauna ain't going to get mad at nothing I said. Oh, maybe they will. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Because it's truth. It's truth. And matter of fact, if I said something didn't pertain to you, shoe don't fit, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Why are you going to get all mad, bent out of shape? <laughs> my man of God loved me and wanted to help me. I never got mad at my man of God. Never. When he preached about things in my life. Trying to help me. Or even if he was wrong on some things. I knew that man loved me. I knew he loved me. But I had to get so wrapped up in God. And be satisfied in God. You know what it says? Great peace to them that love thy law and nothing show up. Nothing show up? Nothing's going to offend you. Great peace of those that love what? The law. Where's the law? Where anybody can help me find the law? Can anybody help me find the law? Can anybody? It's like, honey, where's my glasses? Where's my glasses? Sweetheart, look for my glasses. Huh? Where my glasses, Chris? About to step on them. <laughs> Hello. Isn't that right? Hey, am I telling the truth? Am I telling the truth? Amen. Am I telling the truth? That's right. Amen. Am I telling the truth? Amen. So, we got to love the Lord 
And we got to make sure nothing offends us. Isn't that right? Yes, Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, help us to love you. Help us to be satisfied in you. That's right. Help us to love you. Help us to be so satisfied in this book. Nothing will offend us. Walk with you. Talk with you. Help us, my Father. Dear Lord, to love this book so much. To love the church. To love the Bible. To love your way so much. I pray, my Father. I plead with you. That tonight. That we'll spend time with you. Walking with you. and Talking with you. During our trouble. During our heartache. Help us to meditate in this book. And we find comfort in this book. Find peace in this book. Find joy in this book. In this book. Wife, you're not going to make it without a close walk with God. Husband, you're not going to make it without a close walk with God. You're not going to make it without a close walk with God. You got to have a close walk with God. Amen. A close walk with God. Okay? You got to walk with Him. You got to talk with Him. Isn't that right? So much was said tonight. I'll let the Holy Spirit lead you, I'll let the Holy Spirit guide you. The altar's open for you.